Hey guys, this is Drew, the SDSU EE Tutor, and in today's lesson we're going to go over variables, functions, and how they correlate to memory. So there are different types of variables. You've got chars, shorts, ints, floats, and the list goes on and on. Uh, variables hold values. They can hold numbers, letters, they just generally store memory. It's just like just like in math or algebra when you say x equals 10 y equals 20 they are variables they hold numbers that can vary right and then functions okay functions do things things like printf and scanf printf prints to the screen scanf reads from reads an input right main is also a function and you can create your own functions and it's basically just lines of code that you have set up so that rather than having to type out 20 lines of code you can just put those 20 lines of code in a function and then say do my function so like I said variables have different data types we all know computers read in ones and zeros right but how many so for this x that x equals 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, right but say what if we had x and we said it's equal to this big number Right, so the number with more digits can represent larger numbers. So looking at a couple different types, you've got chars. Chars are one byte, right? So that's eight bits, which is eight digits, and this is equal to one byte, right? If you have a short, you're saying that it is two bytes long, right? So you've got two bytes. And then for an int, you've got four bytes, right? So it's just it's telling you how many numbers how many ones and zeros you are using to represent your number let's take a look at declaring a variable when you want to create a new variable you first start with the data type okay in our case we're creating a variable with the type of char and then you follow with the name of the variable and what it's equal to. And don't forget this semicolon. So because we're calling this a data type of char, this is on, only going to be one byte. So the number that's going to get saved in the computer will be 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay, this is one byte. So if we look at the next line, we create a short, and that variable's name is x, and it's also equal to 21. So what's the difference between these two is a short is two bytes, right? So the short, the number that will be saved in the computer, will be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Right, this is two bytes. So when you're creating the variable, you have to tell the computer how many ones and zeros you're using to represent your number so that when it saves it in memory, it knows how much space to allocate. So how does this correlate to memory? As a programmer, you should begin to develop an idea of how your computer views memory. Okay, you don't have to go into the gory details, but you should begin to develop uh, a basic understanding. Right, so to the computer, it sees memory as a large array of boxes where it can store different values. Right, each box has its own has its own number associated with it. Right, this number is called its address. Right, it's kind of like an ID number. And each address can hold a value in here. Right, so this could say B5. Right, and each address is only one byte. Right, so this is how memory is modeled is a bunch of blocks stuck next to each other and each block has its own unique ID number 
right? And you can store values in here. So going back to what we were saying before, if we've got a char, we've got x, and then we've got short is y, and then we've got int, and this is z. When the computer goes to create these variables, it'll say, okay, x is a char. So x needs one byte, so x can go right here. Alright, and then when it takes a look at this short, it'll say, okay, y is a short. This is two bytes. So y can go here, and y can go here. Alright, so this takes up two addresses because it is two bytes and each address uh, can only store one byte of information so this is why this is so important in terms of why we have data types the computer has to know how many blocks this is going to take up All right and then if we've got z z would be four bytes so it's one two three four let's create extra blocks in here. Right, so Z would take up four bytes. Right, and the reason why this is so important is say we didn't have these data types. Right, gone. And these are all gone now. So let's say we didn't have these data types. So if we just had variables x, y, and z, but this is still supposed to be one byte, this is still supposed to be two bytes, and this is still supposed to be four bytes. When we try to say this in the computer, the computer will say, okay, x, x can go on this address, y can go on this address, and then boom, z can go this address. And we're all done. But that's no good because y was two bytes. y was supposed to take up this address and this address and z just wrote over half of y. right? So that is why this is not okay. Because if you didn't say how large the data was, you would have you would you would continue to keep on overriding that data when you stored new data. So we will continue to go over memory a lot more and reference this model throughout the semester, but this should help help you form a general basis of why we have data types, why we have variables, how that correlates to memory. Now let's take a look at declaring a function. When you want to create a new function, you also have to start with its data type. This is really important functions have data types. When you get to the end of the function you need to return the value that you are returning should be whatever type you said you were going to return. right? Whatever type the function is. And the idea of functions returning and programming shouldn't be a foreign concept. So you could, if you relate it back to just simple math you say x equals 5 and y equals 10 and then somebody gave you the algebraic expression x plus y equals question mark All right so if somebody asks you what is the answer to this function or what is this function return you would say this function returns x plus y is 5 plus 10 this is 15 Right, so this function returns 15. It's a similar thought process uh, in terms of functions for programming. So next you have the function name. And then you have the parentheses and within the parentheses whatever parameters you want to pass in. So if your function is in a block of code and there are other variables in that code that you want to use you need to pass them into your function to use them. So you can say it wants to use x and y and it will use these values in our code. 
First we create an integer called sum and then we set sum equal to x and y and then we return sum and that is what our function does. Well, let's see if we can make a little bit more sense of this. So here's our wonderful program. Okay, and when you want to create a new function, you typically start with a function prototype in the beginning of your block of code. Right? And the function prototype just tells the computer how much space the function is going to be taking up and what's the name of the function. Okay, so it tells you that we're creating a function that is of type int. It is called my function and it takes two parameters that are both integers. This is important to have because if your code is structured like this where you have main above the declaration of your function, when the computer reads through this code it's going to say okay x equals 10, y equals 20, create answer and then answer equals my function. But it doesn't know what my function is yet because my function is down here. So the function prototype tells the computer how much space to allocate for this function and when it hits the function don't worry it's somewhere else later in the code. Right, so now let's take a look at the actual function. Right, in the actual declaration you need to have the function type. Ours is of type integer. The name of the function is my function. The parameters that you pass in are two integers x and y Right, and then we create sum, sum is equal to x plus y, and then we return that sum. So now if we look at how a function is used within main, in main you see uh, we have an integer x equals 10, integer y equals 20, and then we create uh, a variable to store the answer, and then answer equals my function. Right, so this will pass 10 into x, 20 into y, and then my function will add them and return sum, so answer will be equal to sum. Okay, and that's, that's the basic idea of how you use functions and how you pass parameters into them. So that's all I've got for you guys. Uh, thanks for watching, and in the next couple of videos, I'll try and go over actually coding um, and using real examples so we can start taking a look at how this really works.